Hey there, in this video, I'm gonna talk about brands and brands you can actually use. Now I use the word brands, uh, you know, to cover off iconic images that people recognize around the world. And you can take advantage of some. So here's a picture of Spider-Man, for example. Now, before anybody gets all excited, no, you're not allowed to use Spider-Man in your Redbubble designs, T Public designs, Etsy, merch by Amazon. We don't own the trademark to the design of Spider-Man, so that is not usable. How about Superman? Uh, no, we can't use Superman either. That is a trademark that's owned by the publishing company, DC Comics, and so you can't use that. Okay, well, what about this? It's like a soccer team, right? Like a football team, Arsenal, they're really famous. No, you can't use that either. So you can't use any sports images. How about the Olympics, right? The Olympics are global and they're, no, you can't use that. So the Olympic rings, the word Olympics, it's all trademarked. So you can't use any of this stuff. So the question becomes then, as we take our long, lonely walk in the evening and we ask ourselves, what can I use then? I can't use any sports franchises. I can't use any movie or television trademarks. I can't use any superhero images. Well, what can I use? So in this video, I'm gonna break down 10 iconic images. They might be illustrations, photographs, that sort of thing. And they're like brands. Now they're not brands, but they're public domain, highly recognizable pictures, iconic symbols that you can use in your print on demand artwork. And it's that recognizability that'll help you get some sales. So we're looking for things that are recognizable, globally recognizable, things that are in the public domain, and that means they're completely free to use. You never have to worry about having someone say, hey, that's trademarked, it's not trademarked. These are completely free to use. So I'm gonna go through 10 examples in this video, and it'll hopefully supercharge your desire to make some sales with print on demand using recognizable images. <music> Okay, so the first image that I want to share with you is Che Guevara. And if you're a younger, maybe, you know, a young person watching this, you might not know that this is like a real person, right? Because all you've ever seen is just these images on t-shirts. So there's a whole Wikipedia page about Che Guevara. And this is a pretty iconic photograph that comes into play on a lot of t-shirts and stuff. Now, as I scroll on down here on the Wikipedia page, there's actually the original image down here. And then we can see this work was created in Cuba and is now in the public domain. So this is a public domain image. Now, one of the things that I run into is that when I mention the, this sort of thing, like using an iconic picture, people think, well, I can just upload that picture onto a t-shirt and I'll make lots of sales. And it's like, right, you could. Here's all the t-shirts. If you type in Che Guevara t-shirt, there's just tons, right? So I'm not suggesting that you just take the photograph and stick it on a t-shirt. What I'm suggesting is you be an artist and use that as your base image to create artwork. So just as an example, here's the face with the words Che Guevara and then there's a quote underneath it. That's a nice idea. Here's another one over here, Che Guevara revolution, it's all circular. Here's one down here, it's like an Obama poster, it says revolution and it's got Che Guevara's face on it. So there's lots of like different ideas so I'm not, again, like I'm not trying to sound like all high and mighty here, but it's like I get I get questions on the YouTube page like, well, should I just upload it? And like, can I just resell the design? And it's like, well, you could, but there's 800,000 other people doing the exact same thing. So I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, you know, free world, you can do whatever you like. Here's just an example of a mural that was created for uh, with that design. And that's just like on a mural somewhere in the world. Again, that is a, this is in Ireland actually. And this is, again, it's a public domain photo. I'm just saying that this is an example of where you can change the colors. You can make it a different background, that sort of thing. You can also just get the actual SGV format, the scalable vector format, SVG file, sorry. And so this is the original file. You can just click it there. So I'm on Wikimedia Commons and I've got that. And I'll put links in the video description as well. But there's lots of ideas here where you can take this base image and you can create some iconic artwork based out of it.
All right, the next image is the painting of the Mona Lisa, and you can get it pretty much anywhere online. Just type in Mona Lisa public domain. I happen to be on Wikimedia Commons, and I can download this image. There's different pixels. Uh, there's a really high res one actually on Wikimedia Commons. It's 7,400 pixels by 11,000 pixels. It's like huge. It takes a while to actually load in, and it's super high resolution, which is pretty neat. That's going to take a while to load in on my wimpy computer. So an easy way that you can see how to morph these images is just to type in the phrase and then followed by t-shirt. So here's an example, Mona Lisa t-shirt, and you can see a whole bunch of different designs that come back. So again, I want to stress the idea here is to create artwork based on an iconic image. You don't just necessarily just want to throw the image itself right onto a t-shirt. Here's one where there's a mask that's been put on. Here's her chewing bubble gum. There's one here with a, something like a quote over her eyes. Here's Mona Lisa doing techno DJ stuff. So you can incorporate it by basically niching down. The idea is this is iconic plus one other niche. Maybe it's a sports niche like soccer, skiing, hiking, camping. The idea is we all recognize this face. So if we can put sunglasses, a hat, you know, somewhere. So just as an example, I'm just thinking of this as I go. So please don't judge me too harshly. But let's say you've got 50 states in the United States. And let's say every state has something that's sort of iconic. Texas has a cowboy hat, for example. Florida might have like, say, a Hawaiian shirt, or I guess Hawaii would have a Hawaii shirt, come to think of it. But the idea here would be you could put like sunglasses and a Hawaiian shirt and you could say, you know, something, something Texas, you know, like it's like some witty phrase with Texas. Then you'd have a uh, or, or Hawaii, then you'd have a huge hat on and it would be like Texas. Maybe like, so whatever it is, right? Maybe you'd have like a different background. So there's all sorts of ways you can modify the image based on locations, based on countries, based on situations, identities, wordplay, that sort of thing. So again, I suggest you just type in Mona Lisa t-shirt, see what comes back. And then you can see, oh, this is neat. This is actually a pastiche of the first one and the second one. So this is Che Guevara's beret and the hair with Mona Lisa's face on it. That's kind of weird, but okay. Hey, there's something for everybody out there. So anyway, I would just encourage you to take a look through and see if there's different niches that you might like and go, oh, actually that's a similar niche to what I'm looking at. Here's just one with a happy face over top of it, all sorts of things. So lots of ideas there based on this iconic image that is super high res. If you look on Wikimedia on the highest res, that's pretty cool. All right, the next image is uh, attached to a city and the city is Las Vegas, Nevada. I've actually been to this sign, the sign itself, there's a little person standing there, it's not me, but there, you can get your picture taken in front of this sign. The sign itself, the image is not trademarked, it's actually public domain. Here's the Here's the city of Las Vegas's welcome to fabulous Las Vegas sign at night. So you can make designs based on this image. And if you don't believe me, because I know some people go, there's no way that's public domain. You can just Google Las Vegas sign public domain and you'll get article after article that does say the sign is formally owned by the Young Electric Sign Company. Its image remains parentally in the public domain. So that's why we see this everywhere. So you can type in Las Vegas sign t-shirt and you'll just see a lot of ideas that come up. Now, again, I don't want to say just put the Las Vegas sign on the t-shirt, but there's lots of options you could do here. You, because this is just text, you could say, welcome to fabulous and then change the name of the city, for example. Welcome to fabulous. And then maybe it's a person's name. Like that's kind of a funny party t-shirt, right? Like if your name was Mark, and then you're wearing this shirt and it says, welcome to fabulous Mark. Like that's kind of funny, right? So, I mean, like there's lots of ideas. You can also put additional images on top of it. You can have it at night. You can have it during the day. You can have funny so sayings. So again, you know, you want to be an artist, right? You want to have different ideas when you're looking at these. But this is just how you would like research it. You type in Las Vegas sign and then you go, okay, is there things I can do? Different angles I could put this at, different retro, different vintage, weathered, distressed, inverted, nighttime, daytime, palm trees, that sort of thing.
Okay, so here's an iconic photo from the moon landing. The person actually in the photograph is Buzz Aldrin, who was the second person on the moon, and the person reflected in the visor is Neil Armstrong, who actually took the photograph. He was the first person on the moon. So this is a public domain photograph, and it's pretty popular. Now, I'm on a site called rawpixel.com, and you can see over here on the right-hand side, it says public domain U.S. government. Any U.S. government photograph pretty much is in the public domain. So again, this is a common question that I get is people say, well, what about this picture? What about this picture? If it's a NASA space image, it's going to be in the public domain. All right. Now, not the NASA logo. Okay. Not the actual NASA logo, but this picture, you can use it and do whatever you like with it. So I'm on, I'm just on raw pixel and I just typed in Apollo 11. There's a little filter over on the right hand side. I can just click public domain. It's going to basically be unchanged because all of these photos are in the public domain. So you can see here, I'm going to pop open just a couple more just to show you. This is the moon landing photograph. That's a pretty cool ride. Again, public domain. You can download that image. How about this one? Here's the astronauts. You could replace all three heads with your favorite cat or dog. This is a public domain image. That's a great, that's a great picture. So here's another one if you're just if you're not into raw pixel and you want to use a different website. Here's the air and space at the Smithsonian and there's iconic images from Apollo 11. So you could use these as well. But if you just wanted to like get an idea about other iconic space images, there's the boot, there's the rocket going off, there's the orbiting around the you know around the moon with this with the Earth in the background. There's a lot of different stuff here. This is another one. It's just history NASA gov and there's like Saturn V rockets launching, lunar landing, that sort of thing. So I just mentioned this just in case you're thinking, well, maybe that's like a really, like that's an oversaturated picture. There's a different one. Like there's this one here where the person's standing there facing the flag. There's, there's tons of different images you can use for space, but the more iconic you can use, typically the better because it's more recognizable for uh, people who are interested in buying t-shirts. Okay, this next image is pretty iconic and it's the actor Boris Karloff portraying Frankenstein. So there's some confusion generally about Frankenstein because Frankenstein is such an iconic movie, but the movie is actually based on a book. So if you type in, is Frankenstein in the public domain, then there is a little bit of a blurb here about since the story of Frankenstein is still in the public domain. So the story, that's the book that was written by Mary Shelley, the author, Universal can't stop others from making their own Frankenstein movies, books, comic books, plays, that sort of thing. So this image is in the public domain. Okay. And this image, as I scroll on down, I'm just on Wikipedia and I, it's in public domain, Frankenstein's monster, Boris Karloff, and it's in the public domain. Okay. So you can use this image as an image. You can put it on a t-shirt a coffee mug. I've actually done this. I've done prints. I've done t-shirts with this. Now I've changed it. I've inverted the image. I've made it black light. I've added different backgrounds, that sort of thing, right? So, you know, you can use it as is. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to make it as a base design for artwork, that's fine too. What you can't do is just take everything off the movie and start taking stills from the films and that sort of thing. So this is where things get a bit tricky because people say, well, if it's in the public domain, does that mean I can make my own Frankenstein movie? Yes. If it's in the public domain, meaning the picture, can I make my own public domain movie? Yes, but it can't look like the picture if you're doing a movie. But if you're doing a picture, you can use this picture. The picture is public domain. The story, the actual book is public domain. The movie is Universal's trying to hold on to the rights. So just be aware. You just want to do a quick Google here. Is Frankenstein in the public domain? And then of course you would use, you know, these articles. You'd read through it in a little bit more detail. But just to let you know, I've used this picture in the past for posters, prints, and you're going to see it everywhere on t-shirts. It's a pretty popular, iconic image if you're going to use a Frankenstein image. Okay, the next image is The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, and it's the actual book itself. So I'm going to show you the book. Now, what happens is, you know, I'm, I'm on Wikipedia here, and this is a public domain image, and this is the Tin Man and the Scarecrow. And this is, again, public domain images 
are, you know, identified as such on Wikipedia. I'm going to go to archive.org and here's the actual book. Okay, so I'm on the website archive.org and I can actually just flip through the book and I can see there's just absolutely glorious illustrations inside the book. It's just going to take a second here to load in. But you can see this book is just chock full of text and illustrations. Everything in this book is in the public domain. You could take this picture and you could make a high-end print, a t-shirt, a coffee mug, whatever you like with it. You can remove backgrounds. You can change things. Now, as I'm saying this, I understand there's a few people out there with the pitchfork saying, hold on, hold on. What about the movie? The movie is trademarked. So you can't use the hugely famous movie and take a still from the movie. That's illegal. That's trademarked. So trademarks are typically tied to products. So in other words, the movie is trademarked, but the book is public domain. So you could actually print this book yourself and sell it and you would be fine. Now, I don't know that anyone would buy it because there's free copies online, but you could replace all the illustrations, for example, and publish it. You can take just the illustrations and create a coloring book with it, for example. So there's lots of different things you can do here with the Wizard of Oz, but this is a nice high quality scan I'm looking at on archive.org. You can make scarecrow t-shirts, Tin Man t-shirts using these illustrations that are found in the book. Okay, the next image is pretty iconic. It's raising the flag on Iwo Jima. It's a really famous photograph that was taken near the end of World War II that shows U.S. servicemen raising the flag on the island of Iwo Jima. That's the actual picture there. There's really high quality scans available all throughout the internet, but I just typically go to Wikipedia to grab it. As I scroll on down, there's going to be lots of information like who the actual people are, the licensing information. This work is in the public domain which is great to see. There's even different file histories available down at the bottom. So this image, what can you do with this image? Hmm. Well, you can remove the background and you could put it on a t-shirt. You could have it as is with quotes of the war underneath it. You could have, you know, US propaganda sort of poster-esque, you know, designs. But what I really like as well is there's actually a poster, an actual US Army propaganda poster called the Seventh War Loan now all together and it's on the library of congress it's completely free here's a zoom in of it and what i love about this is i mean you can really zoom in it's a nice high quality scan here so you can find different like this is an actual picture of the poster you can find really high quality scans online of this sort of thing you would just google world war ii propaganda posters and you're going to see a bunch of other stuff come up I wanted to point out these first two items that come up as well this is uncle sam and this is rosie the riveter Uncle Sam is really popular as well. He's also completely in the public domain. And the reason is because these are like so old. These posters are like super old, like hundreds of years old. Same thing here with Rosie the Riveter. You can get a nice high quality scan. And I've actually been pretty successful selling Rosie the Riveter stuff over the years. You can put a mask on her, sunglasses, little um, black marks under the eye if you're doing a football. You can remove the white background. You can remove this text. You can remove the bottom piece of it. You can have funky backgrounds in the background. You can do all sorts of stuff for feminist posters, uh, you know, girl power, that sort of thing. Uncle Sam, same idea. You can put all sorts of neat designs. And because it's such a clean, high quality scan, you can remove a lot of this stuff down at the bottom and the top. And you can just use the image. Again, sunglasses, you know, you may want to have a different background quotes, that sort of thing. So there's lots of different ideas. I just include those as two bonus in case you're like, eh, I don't really want to do war stuff. This is a little more like positive. This is, you know, we can do it. I want you, that sort of thing. But there's lots of different Army and Navy and Air Force uh, images from uh, World War II especially. But there's also World War I propaganda posters as well. But World War II ones are pretty cool. So the flag raising on Iwo Jima is one of the most iconic photos in the last hundred years. Uh, again, lots of opportunities here if you're into war and military and that sort of thing. One of the most iconic quote unquote brands in the world is the United States and the flag of the United States. The flag of the United States is actually not eligible for copyright. It's not trademarked. So this is a work in the public domain. I do want to point out 
not every flag in the world is in the public domain, so I'm going to talk specifically about the United States flag. But you may just may want to check. Just Google to see if your country's flag is in the public domain. But if you're looking for something where it's universally recognizable around the world, the United States flag, you can pretty much do anything you want on it. So here's just examples. I just typed in U.S. flag t-shirt and a whole bunch of stuff comes back. Again, you could just put the U.S. flag on the front of a shirt. There's nothing wrong with that. But I would suggest being an artist, you know, here's a great example where you would have it be a little more chalk outline. This is distressed. This is an all over print. This is like tatters, you know, ripped kind of thing. This is black and white. This is a heart design. You can change the design. You could have a cat outline. You could have, this is looking like, this is an American flag, but the way they've made it almost looks like Captain America's shield kind of thing. Here's an iconic picture with the US flag and then the Canadian flag. You could combine things. Like there's just tons and tons of options, right? So, you know, stick an eagle on there, have the flag be waving. There's just, it's nonstop, right? So the reason I mentioned the US flag in particular is just you can start as a base point on it and you can do base designs based on the United States flag. I've sold tons of stuff with the US flag on it. It never gets old. It's easy to use. You can get really high quality SVG files and PNG files right from Wikipedia. And again, all of this stuff is in the public domain. So you can let your imagination run wild. Okay, for some of you younger viewers on YouTube, you may not know who Albert Einstein is specifically, but I'm sure you've seen this likeness somewhere around lurking on the internet. Albert Einstein's a really famous physicist and scientist, and there's a big Wikipedia page, you can read all about him, and there's different pictures as well as he goes from a young man to an old man, and he's an absolutely fascinating person in history. This picture here, is in the public domain. So this, as soon as you see Wikimedia Commons, so like this says, this is a file from Wikimedia Commons, everything in Wikimedia Commons is public domain. So you don't need to worry that you're gonna be stealing something in, uh, in regards to somebody's trademark. So Wikimedia Commons means it is in the public domain. Now I do wanna point out, if you Google Albert Einstein in popular culture, you're going to see this picture with the tongue sticking out. That is not in the public domain. At least I couldn't find evidence that it is. So I would not recommend you use that. But I would recommend going to this page though, because you can see examples, stencil work, statues. Over on the right here, you can see this a cartoon. This is a statue, some sort of, you know, cartoon of Albert Einstein, postage stamp designs, urban art, that sort of thing. So the idea is everybody who's, you know, over the age of 20 knows who Albert Einstein is, hopefully. And the idea is that you've got somebody here who's basically a celebrity and you can use their image. I do want to point out as well, you can use quotes on these uh, images. So you could say, remove the background a little bit and have a quote underneath it. And then that could go on a t-shirt or a coffee mug, that sort of thing. Albert Einstein's highly quotable. There's some really cool, funny, irreverent quotes that he's got as well. So it could be in the context of science or it could just be in the context of a funny, interesting quote. A lot of brainiac people like wearing Albert Einstein shirts to show off how smart they are. I know it may not seem like the most exciting image to use, but Abraham Lincoln's portrait is uh, pretty iconic. I'm just going to zoom in here on it. And of course, Abraham Lincoln's one of the greatest presidents in the history of the United States. You can remove the background on this image and you can have Lincoln quotes. You can have funny images about Abraham Lincoln. Again, this is in the public domain. So this is a file from the Wikimedia Commons. So again, public domain, it says right here on Wikimedia. Um, that's is kind of my go-to. So if you're ever wondering like, well, is this image in the public domain or is that image in the public domain? If you search on Wikipedia, you're going to see all sorts of images. What you want to do is search on Wikimedia. And if you search on Wikimedia, everything in there is in the public domain. Here's a list of the presidents. So in addition to Lincoln, you could use any of these portraits. So I've just typed into Google list of presidents of the United States. I selected the first option, which is the Wikipedia page. And all of these images are in the public domain. 
because these are all official government portraits. So as you scroll on down, you're going to see a whole lot of old guys that we maybe don't recognize. But as we get closer and like into the 20th century, you'll see like Kennedy, for example, Nixon, Reagan, Clinton, Bush, Obama, Trump, and now Biden. All of these are public domain photos. So I'm just going to pop this one open. This is George Washington. This is a file from the Wikimedia Commons. As we scroll on down, we can see this is in the public domain. John Adams, we scroll down, public domain. Donald Trump, I love this. Freely licensed in the public domain, the person shown may have rights that legally restrict certain reissues. So I do want to point out because this is a living person and because this is not like a super like ancient history person like the way George Washington is, there may be trademarks around this. So you could use this image. Typically, you can use this image. Any U.S. politician you can use as an image. So don't let that frighten you. Same thing here with Joe Biden. We've got the same personality rights warning and typically this is a public domain image so you can use this on t-shirts coffee mugs u.s politicians governors senators these are all very like these are all fair game because they're considered members of the of the public domain public kind of idea so i just use abraham lincoln because he's one of the most iconic presidents you could use george washington you can use any president really but that's an idea for you to go forth and make great artwork so I hope you found that helpful. 10 different brands, and I know they're not brands like McDonald's, you know, that sort of thing, but they're ideas that they're iconic photos, iconic images, and you can hopefully use this as a springboard to generate some really cool and recognizable artwork that will hopefully be great sellers in your future. Thanks everybody. As always, feel free to hit the like button, the subscribe button. I always love hearing comments down below. You know, it means a lot to me that you guys give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching this and I hope you have a great, great day. Thank you.